Hello there, my name is Anna Melia and I'm from Northeast Animal Rights. Welcome to another one of my talks on all things vegan. Today I wanted to talk about animals and education. This is something which I feel quite strongly about because my background is in education and I worked in a secondary school for, for a long, long time. Uh, but also um, I do volunteer work for Animal Aid. So sometimes I go into schools as part of drop down days when they have a number of visitors in. Um, so I'm talking to people about um, pupils about um, about how, how you need to be kind to animals. And then they have other visitors who are bringing animals such as tarantulas and snakes in. Um, so it is quite an interesting environment to be in. Um, but despite many changes to education policies and curriculum over the years, you know, from my time being a child and from my, you know, from when I recently left a um, secondary school, nothing really has changed in terms of animals, um, the, the use of animals in school. Um, they were being used in, in many, many ways. Um, first of all, in the canteen, you know, when I, when I was kind of in, on duty in the canteen, um, in the school canteen where the children would sit and have their meals and children would obviously mess around with food and the thrown, you know, what I say is dead, dead animal body parts around. They think it's just thrown a sausage around, but actually I say it's a dead animal that, 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 that they actually are. Um, but obviously there are other ways in which animals are used in schools as well. They're used in experiments. So some animals are bred specifically um, for experiments in biology. You know, um, usually, um, the, the, you know, that there was a lot, lot of uh, fruit flies being ordered in to pull apart and to look under, look at under microscopes, uh, rats and mice, um, or even blood as well. Um, in animal experiments, um, some, of the, some of you will already know this, but this was actually the reason why I went vegetarian at the age of 14, because we were doing experiments on, on life cycles of, um, of animals, and they decided to put some fertilised eggs in the incubator. They turned the incubators off at different stages of the, of the animal's development, and then they opened the, um, the, the eggs up. And obviously I was absolutely horrified to see um, blood inside and fetuses, you know, tiny little fetuses getting small, getting like slightly larger and larger. And I was so shocked with it. That was that was it for me. I went vegetarian pretty much overnight. But, you know, chickens are still being exploited in schools in the 21st century. And um, we still have a lot of primary schools. And I know that they, they are starting to go into care homes as well, residential care homes. Um, but in, in, um, they use it as part of the curriculum. It's a very, very lazy way of, of showing an, a life cycle of an animal by having egg hatching programs. Obviously, the, the children say these, these lovely um, the eggs kind of like being warmed up and an incubate are taking the place of the, 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 uh, the animal, uh, the animal mother. And, um, and then... The eggs hatch out and the children see these lovely fluffy animals but they don't see what happens to the animals afterwards um so these poor chickens are still being exploited you know all these years down the line from when i was when i was a 14 year old seeing them being exploited in biology and uh, and another thing which i remember is a sort of um 17 16 17 year old maybe um in, in, when i was in uh, lower six um, th those who were doing um, doing um, A level biology, they were expected to um, to experiment on dead pregnant rats. So they brought in, um, you know, rats who had been who had been impregnated, um, had um, been um, you know raised and then killed, and then these animals were cut open, ironically to show um, to show students um, comparisons between those animals and humans. Um, but all of those experiments, even um, even now. Um, you know, even then, should I say, even then, sort of like 40 years ago, they had the technology and they also had the knowledge and expertise to uh, to show children um, how things were, how things needed to be and what they needed to learn about reproduction and, you know, other and life cycles and other um, other things, other reasons they use animals for um, without having to resort to killing animals. Um, and, you know, I know from working in a school, teachers are really, really busy and they will, um, you know, and lots of them are, you know, looking for the really creative ways of, of, um, of, of producing, the, uh, producing the, um, lessons. But there are teachers who will use the tried and tested methods, which are egg hatching programs or, you know, um, you know, buying animals in. Um, and, and that's what happens. They actually, you can actually go to scientific catalogs and, and purchase animal body parts, which is just, you know, it's just a horrendous thing to kind of like to kind of, you know, to to think that the, that these animals are actually bred somewhere and then killed and then sent through the post um, to you know to biology teachers and science teachers to do that. Um, I remember going back again um, to a physics lesson. We were doing vision. I never wanted to do biology for, for exactly those reasons, and I thought in physics I'd be pretty safe from animal experiments. But in physics, there was actually a lesson on vision. And, um, you know, I remember a student, one of my, actually one of my friends was, it was deemed praiseworthy. She, she went out to go and get a, um, a bullseye um, from, uh, I mean, a bullseye it was probably, it was probably from a cow, but um, from a butcher's. 
and then they cut the the uh, the, bullets, the, the, the eye open to um, show uh, to talk about human vision. Uh, you know, it's just casual cruelty and conditioning absolutely everywhere. You know, and, and not really thinking about the and um, the provenance of where these animal body parts come from. And animals, are, you, you know, have also used ironically to to show children how to care for them as well. So instead of talking about the life, the lifespan, and the genuine care that these animals need. You know, like of complex animals that have in schools like tortoises, they'll stick an isolated tortoise in an environment which is which meets the basic requirements in law, but they're nothing like what they should have in, in the wild. Um, and hamsters, you know, and animals, you know, like rats, uh, rats and, um, and rabbits and guinea pigs, animals who move around at dusk and dawn, these are now forced into a really artificial environment. So their body clocks are changed to match ours because we want them during the, during the, um, the school day. We don't want them coming out at night, which is obviously what, what, what is normal to them. And we, they, are, they are doing this um, to accommodate a so-called educational opportunity. But what are we actually teaching children here? We're not teaching them anything which is, you know, which is real because the animals are not exhibiting normal behaviours. You know, that it's not normal for animals to be picked up and petted and stroked and moved, you know, and carried around and passed around. It's not normal for animals to, to be living in the environments that they are living in. Um, and, you know, and what happens when these animals die? You know, are they treated with respect or are they just discarded? I know from personal experience and personal horror of finding this out that actually guinea pigs in, in a school, um, you know, where I was, um, they were just put in the rubbish. So none of this is showing up, uh, showing up children anything about real life experience and how to treat animals respectfully um, and how to care for actual living beings. Throughout my own school life, I mean, going back, to, I mean, I kind of feel as if I'm going backwards and forwards a bit here, but I'm kind of like making comparisons to being, you know, when I was a child to actually what is um, what is the case now. Um, I remember countless fish in, in bowls, and then there was gerbils and hamsters. All of these were taken home um, by pupils for the holiday, and actually, it was considered a privilege to do so if you had behaved yourself all the way through the term. You were allowed to do this, but often an animal would not reappear because they had died during the period. Because obviously, um, the, the person who had taken them home was inexperienced in looking after them, but they would be replaced by a similar looking one as well um you know so the children weren't distressed the children were lied to and weren't told actually what had happened to the animal and i remember my own school staff um, being concerned about the care of one particular hamster who had lost all his fur by being uh, you know through stress by being handled so much he was rescued because he was taken home by a concerned member of staff during a holiday and the school was told that he had died and, uh, and he, on this occasion he wasn't replaced but then down the line, a tortoise appeared, you know, someone who couldn't look after a tortoise, who wanted, um, you know, in theory, the children have an educational experience about tortoises. But, you know, this tortoise lived a solitary life in a vivarium, in a room, um, which, you know, which was tiny, nowhere near the amount of space that the, the animals would cover in the wild. And these animals, you know, there was one in, in the other end of the school as well. Um, they had, you know, they were never ever going to set eyes on another tortoise, you know, another animal of their own kind in their lifetime. Now, we also, um, you know, there are also qualifications, animal care qualifications. Now, these are qualifications which are aimed at the less academic um, uh, children in school. Um, so, you know, the children are, um, are taken to petting farms. Um, they never take the slaughterhouses, uh, funny enough. And they're allowed to pet and stroke and feed the animals, but they're not told how the animals are killed um, or why they're there in the first place. Some of these pet farms even serve animals in the cafe. So the irony of, you know, you go next door and have a ham, you know, a pig sandwich, and you've actually got pigs in, the, in this pet farm as well. Schools offer trips um, to zoos as reward. They never do the research on, on, the, on the zoos. You know, it's, it's basically about risk assessments for the children. It's not about how comfortable or how happy or, you know, how you know, how cherished these animals are. It really isn't about that. And there's nothing remotely educational about animals in captivity. There's loads and loads of research which says that animals should not be in, in captivity. Captivity. Look at Born Free, look at, um, you know, um, uh, Freedom for Animals. There's loads and loads of research which say that. Um, and there's nothing remotely rewarding or safe or secure for these animals being gawped at through the other side of, of a, you know, a glass window or through cage bars as well. Now, animals like rats and mice, um, you know, unless they're being used for so-called educational purposes um, and gulls, um, as well as a separate animal, they deemed pests in schools, despite the, the problem being caused by humans. You know, gulls know when lunchtime is because and they hang around waiting for children to finish their lunch. We, you know, humans call call animals like this scavengers and pests, but they're not. They're survivors. You know, they are doing what they need to do to survive. And we demonize them for trying to, to find food. You know, rats and mice are demonized because they have the nerve to pick up scraps which are dropped by humans in order for them and their families to survive. They're poisoned, they're trapped, they're, they're gassed. 
you know, just because they exist. And then we have the situation where, you know, some places will bring in hawks, you know, they bring them in to chase away the gulls just because they're simply looking for food. So you're having two bird species being, uh, you know, being exploited and abused just for one purpose. And that is that purpose is, is a human fault. Humans drop litter. So these animals are being brought in to stop, um, you know, hawks are being brought in to stop gulls and, and, um, and then all of the, uh, the, the so-called pest control for rats and mice as well. Now, a, a child's reaction to, to an animal being hurt is one of horror, but we trick and fool and condition our children to accept casual cruelty and neglect. Humans in school are in a position of trust, yet they teach children it's acceptable to treat animals in this way. Children, especially all, the older ones, um, are made to feel different for saying they don't agree with it or they want to be vegetarian or vegan. Um, and if you, so if you have a child in school and you disagree with animals in their school, or the children, the child themselves are telling you that they disagree with animals in their school, make your feelings known. So make your feelings known to the head, to the head of year, to the governors, and um, really important people who are, you know, who are, who are vital in school and um, to be contacted if you have any issues with any part of your child's education, or speak to the CEO of the trust if the school is an academy as well. Raise it with the Secretary of State, um, I know at the moment the, 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 the Secretary of State just keeps on changing. Um, however, you know, if you just look up Secretary of State for Education um, and, and contact them, um, they are obliged to, um, you know, regardless of what party is in power, they are obliged to take note of your concerns because they are the ones who actually set the curriculum. So, um, you know, they're, they're the ones who, who agree the curriculum and push the curriculum out. Um, you know, obviously they take advice from other, other professionals as well. So we need to make sure that all of these people who are the decision makers know that it's wrong to have animals in, in, in schools used in this way. Okay. Um, you know, we speak to the education department of your local authority as well. Tell them that you don't, do not want your child to be part of this. Um, now, the RSPCA has created a document um, called Animal Friendly Schools, uh, which is mostly good. You can download it if you just go on to, um, I'll hold, hold it a little bit easier there. You can just download it um, on the, um, on the, um, on the, on the RSPCA's website. Just Google um, Animal Friendly Schools and there's lots of information on there as well. And also Animal Aid have loads of good information, um, you know, for education as well. They have an Animal Kind website and they have absolutely loads of inf information there. Um, this RSPCA document is really, really good. However, it lets itself down at the very end because it then talks about the freedom food scheme, which obviously is something which we, we strongly oppose. But you know, it's not right that in this day and age that we are still using old fashioned ways of, um, of showing children about animals in school. So if you disagree, there's lots of things you can do um, because we need things to change. Um, and children and animals deserve better. They, you know, children deserve to know the truth and animals deserve not to be used um, for, you know, for, la for lazy educational opportunities. So I'm going to sign off there now. Um, so if you like our work, um, please follow us on, um, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. We are on YouTube as well. Um, we really, really do appreciate every single one of you. Um, and you can donate to our work as well. We have a link in our Facebook bio um, or you can contact our page as well. So I'm going to sign off there and I hope that this has given you some food for thought, some plant-based food for thought. Um, as to why we shouldn't use animals in education. So thank you very much. Sorry, thank you very much for listening. My name is Anna Melia from Northeast Animal Rights. Goodbye. <laughs>